Amen? Okay, let's uh, let the kids go with June. And the one that today? <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> God bless you guys, okay? All right. You know, uh, there's a story in the Bible that I really, I really loved it, reading upon this story that I'll read today. And I really enjoyed that part of the Bible. It's a passage in Luke. And, uh, and when you see Jesus coming with all those people around him, and he sees somebody, hey, one of the few occasions that the Lord speaks to that person, you know. And the good thing is that this, this text we're going to read now shows that God, Jesus Christ, He does not see how rich you are, how beautiful you are, how handsome you are, how smart you are. He doesn't see the things. He doesn't care about the things. But He sees your heart. And your heart indeed. You know, he sees all the way through your soul, your spirit, your heart. And of course you could see, he can see more than anybody else, right? And it's uh, something that, that's really typical. That's why I, read, I love reading the Gospels, is because all of those scribes, Scribes were Bible scholars back then, no? They studied the Bible. Or doctors of law. Or the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the church people that did miss a service, didn't did, uh, lose an opportunity to show how church uh, goer he was or she was. I mean, he was. All those Pharisees were men. But they were well known for their devotion to the church, okay, to the temple, to the synagogues. Also, the Sadducees were another church of people that uh, used to come to, to you know, study the Bible and read the, the, the prophets, read the Torah. The Torah is the five first books of the Bible, and that's that's, that was their, their Bible back then. What it means is, all of those church people, they, get, they got to know Jesus Christ, amen? amen? But almost no one followed him. <laughs> and what it means to me is that those were the ones who were supposed to honor Jesus Christ, to praise him for his coming, and to inaugurate his kingdom on earth, but they did the opposite. And what you saw, in fact, was that Jesus got those ordinary people, common people, like you and me, okay? Common people, out of the crowd, and say, follow me, amen? amen. So that's why I love about our God. He is the true creator of everything. Jesus Christ, along with his Father, created everything in the Holy Spirit, everything, imaginable. All creation, universe, the planets, the stars, the galaxies. You know, it's a it's immense, immense creation that our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ participated. And he came to live among us. He came to incarnate, to be flesh among us. 
for just for our, our own benefit, out of love. And I say, Lord, thank you, because you could have been another God, right? Could have been a bad God. <laughs> you could have been a God totally different, cold, like the, the gods of the Greek mythology, or the gods of the Mayas, or the gods of the Indian, you know, the Indian gods, all those gods, all the other gods are bad gods. They don't have love, they, they, want, they will have to be followed, and whenever you follow those gods, you pay a hard, hard, heavy price, sometimes with your own life, okay? But our God is pure love. <laughs> now, in spite of being a creator, he is love. True love. Pure love. And that is why God emphasizes so much on the importance of us to love and be loved. Amen? Amen. This is why the emphasis is on forgiveness, forgive each other, and on love, love each other. And this is why the emphasis is love God above anything else and love your brother as yourself. Amen? Sometimes it is hard, right? <laughs> to love our brothers and sisters, right now? <laughs> but that's the way it is. We have to love our brothers and sisters as we love ourselves. In this text on Luke, chapter 19, it's a beautiful, beautiful text. So Luke 19, verse 1 to 10. I know that some of you know the text, but let's read it and let's see what the Holy Spirit tells us about it. Amen? Did you find it? Page 743. Page 743. Luke 19, verse 1. Okay? It goes like this. Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began, and began to mutter. He has gone to, the, to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Amen? Amen. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful text. Okay. Jesus came from Judea and was heading to Jerusalem. This was a little before his death. Israel would celebrate another Passover, and that Passover, the Lamb was our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? On that cross. Jesus, Jesus' itinerary included his passage through Jericho. Jericho today is in West Bank. 
uh, you know, Jericho is the, the, the east side of Israel. And I feel so, I feel a little bit, a little bit mad because the Israel in 1966-67 war, they conquered Jericho and then they gave it back to the Arabs. So Jericho now, if you want to go to Jericho, you have to, to go to the West Bank. But Jericho, all that reach, Jericho, Bethlehem is also near Jericho, is Israel. Okay, even whatever they say is not today, I don't care, it's part of Israel. And Jesus was there in Jericho. Jericho was a very prominent city, not very big, but was full of people from all over. It was a commercial town, okay, full of business, shops, stores, import, export, all that stuff was there. And, and, and also, you know, all around Jericho, back then until today, is desert, but it's an you know, oasis. No oasis? Oasis is a place where there's water, either a pond or a lake, and surrounded by palm trees. This is, uh, this is an oasis in the middle of the desert. And Jericho is, and today it was, an oasis in the middle of the desert. And that's why uh, it was a city built in the shade of hundreds, hundreds of palm, of date palms. So, uh, there were many men in Jericho, good men, good men, very important men for Israel, intellectuals, uh, men, men uh, that uh, were politicians that lived there. And they, they, they had this man called Zacchaeus, okay, a very wealthy man, a very rich man. But he was a tax collector, a publican. Publican means public for people, publican. And can means collector. So it was a collector of the people. <laughs> a public or a publican. A publican is a tax collector. And tax collectors, nobody likes them, right? We don't have that anymore in America, but in the past, centuries ago, not only here in other countries, they, they could, they, they, the tax was collected by people, okay? They used to come door to door. Hey, where's the money? Give me the money. Not like today. Today, go to the computer and do it. Not centuries ago. Centuries, centuries ago, the tax collector would come to your door, knock on the door and say, where's the money? Where's, the, your, where's the, your tax? You had to pay it right away, amen? But those guys, they always made wrong accounting, right? And people paid more than what they had to because part of that money was his, was theirs. And that's why they hated those publicans because also because the publicans didn't work for Israel. They worked for the Roman Empire, remember? Israel belonged to the Roman Empire, okay? The money was to the Romans. But of course, they kept the part of the money, okay? And uh, so in the short words, a publican was an extortionist, an exporter, a circle of the people, an enemy of Israel. Someone hated, rejected, frowned upon by the people, condemned to public contempt. A selfish, petty, merciless, who thought all of himself. Someone insensitive to human needs, sufferings and miseries. Someone greedy, dishonest, who practiced a profession of prey. What he lacked in size, what he lacked in size, he lacked in character. Zacchaeus was not just a publican, a tax collector. He was the chief thing, the general head of the publicans. He was the boss of the publicans. Therefore, he must have surpassed them in cunning and sagacity. His wealth was the reward of injustice, bribery, exploitation, and extortion. Okay? Zacchaeus was someone who had sold his morals, his honor for money, like in many politicians today. I'm sorry, but that's true, okay? Man, today, nothing has changed. Till today, things move on like that. And someone Jericho society respected and supported only for his status 
his power, his wealth. So people respect him for his authority, of, for his money. But do you think he was happy? Of course not. He knew his friends were fake friends. His friends that he had were friends who only were there for his money, for his power. But he didn't have friends. So he was a, a lonesome man. He was lonely. And Jesus was there. Of course, he got to know about Jesus. He saw that Jesus had to heal people there. And he knew that those people. Of course, he went to their houses. So he knew all those guys. He knew Matthew. He knew Peter. He knew the families. The, the advantage of being a tax collector is that he knew most of the families. So he was well known. And Zacchaeus, despite being a rich, cultured, powerful, and influential customs official, he was nothing more than a lonely, frustrated, and empty man. He felt like he was a target of stairs. He was. Whatever he went to, look at this. This is bad stuff. Oh, look at this. A, no, nobody liked him. He was constantly criticized and it hurt him. He was a very happy man indeed. Zacchaeus heard the reports about Jesus. For everywhere the fame of Jesus was evident. Some said that Jesus was a prophet, others that he raised Lazarus from the dead, that he cured lepers, the lame, the paralyzed, and restored sight to the blind. Others told him that he put pride to loaves and five fish and fed a multitude. But church officials did not lose time saying that Jesus ate with the sinners. He ate with the publicans like Zacchaeus. And he talked with the to the harvest, to the prostitutes. So Zacchaeus was very impressed with Jesus. <laughs> First, because he talked to the publicans like him. Matthew was there. Who was Matthew? Matthew was a former tax collector too. No, Zacchaeus was Matthew, Matthew's boss. Okay? Okay? And I think that Matthew talked to Zacchaeus about Jesus. I think. It's not the Bible, I think. He says, hey Zacchaeus, here's, I'm leaving. He said, what? We're leaving. You, there's a lot of money, man. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm his disciple now. I don't want to be just gave me more. Are you crazy? You're going to leave? Yes. I have everything with my Lord, my, my pastor, with my God. No more. He is this, he is this, he is that, he is wonderful. Ba, 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 ba. So I'm sure that Matthew shared the gospel of Jesus Christ to Zacchaeus. Amen? Amen. And Zacchaeus was really curious. He wanted to know who Jesus was. He never saw Jesus. He never heard Jesus personally. In this time, Jesus was going to his, 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 to his city, his city, his town. So Zacchaeus tried to see who Jesus was. He sought to see with his own eyes, hear with his own ears, interpret and judge with his own brain who Jesus was. Zacchaeus was not satisfied with the information alone. He was, he was not satisfied with the contradictory findings. He decided to research, seek, listen, argue, and see who Jesus was. You may say, you may say, one of us may say, I tried to see who Jesus was, but I couldn't. What was your difficulty in having a personal relationship with Jesus, Sandra. What is your difficulty in, in you find Jesus in your heart, in your soul, and you have Jesus to control you, to give you power to overcome your temptations and your sins and, and change your inside out, your weight, maybe think you were, maybe, no, maybe your race, with your social, pos social position, your life full of mistakes, your great destruction. No, nothing can stop you from 
seek Jesus as Zacchaeus did. Amen? Amen. Nothing, nothing. Okay? Uh, that, no, there is no problem whatsoever that may stop us from finding Jesus in our heart. Amen? From putting him in our heart. And, uh, but Zacchaeus had a problem. The crowd was around Jesus. Jesus had finally come into his town. Jesus was there. He could hear the movement. He could hear the noise. People shouting. You know, someone was singing. Jesus was there. The multitude, you know, the crowd surrounded Jesus. He was coming, coming. And the crowd coming to Jesus prevented anyone from seeing, meeting, and knowing who Jesus was. The second reason is that Zacchaeus was sh very short. <laughs> a short guy. Powerful financially, but short. You know how short people are? I've met some short people. They don't stop. They're like a machine. I've had, I've worked with short people. The shorter you are, they are, the more diligent, the more big, the more powerful they seem to have. You know what I mean? They don't stop like a machine. Man. They want to, to show how big they are and how good they are in whatever they do because you know, to maybe to overcome the, the, the statue. So they do work a lot. The short people, they, they don't stop. And this is what happened with Zacchaeus. Okay. Uh, uh, Zacchaeus maybe tried to go around, but people were like this, get out of here, I'm with the animals. He finally had an idea. He maybe he tried to go over the rocks around there. There are plenty of rocks there, but not no 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 one no one no uh, toy high enough for him to be on. But he found something. And there was a sycamore tree. You know what sycamore is? Sycamore is a wild fig tree, fig tree, it's called sycamore, sycamore. and that's why the name Sikira from my mother, Sikira in Portuguese, sycamore, it's a Jewish name, it's a, that's why I know we know we have a blood, Jewish blood, because sycamore is a typical Jewish name, it's a, a wild fig tree, so he cut up that fig tree, and he stayed there. Nobody could see him, but it's short in the middle of the tree. And he said, Wow, I can see everything. He could see the, people, the crowd coming. He could see Jesus in the middle. He said, Wow, I can see now everything. And Jesus came. Okay? But I think that for a while he thought like this. Listen, Zacchaeus was a man of power of status, a civil servant, a great authority in Jericho. He was a secretary of Jericho's treasury. But what he maybe he thought, what would they think if they saw me? <laughs> well the rich man on top of a tree. What do you think about me? What would his colleagues say? What would his family say? What would his neighbors say? <laughs> Okay, climb a tree like a street kid. Okay, uh, he could be mocked for that. The people would make fun of him, ridicule him. However, Zacchaeus was really thirsty for God. Amen. Amen. He was really hungry for the bread of life. He really wanted to know who Jesus was. What he heard about Jesus from Matthew and some other people was enough for him to be touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. He was touched. He said, I have to meet this man, this, this rabbi. Uh, he is he's exactly what I want from a rabbi. He is a wonderful man. He is a wonderful man. I love him. I want him. And that's what happened. And there was Zacchaeus at the top of the tree, hooked, suspended.
had his proper bread, a special bread in a well hidden position, camouflaged among the branches and the trees, waiting for his great opportunity to see who Jesus was. A great scene, right? A movie thing, a movie scene. A movie scene. It was there on the tree, the crowd was there below, Jesus was coming and coming and coming, and he said, well, finally I'm going to meet and see who he was. He would see with his own eyes uh, the noisy crowd approaches. He heard here, hears noises, voices. The disciples come. Zacchaeus says, hey, I know that that is Peter. Oh, this is the fisherman of Capernaum. His brother Andrew. He knew everybody. There is James and John. Oh, there is Matthew, my folk, but he's there with Jesus. Oh, this is Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was healed by Jesus, right? He knew everybody. So he's come, he's coming down the street, he's coming. He's arrived here. He's on the diff. He's right here. Jesus is right here. He's right here. He's there. He's well, he's right here under me. Under me the fig tree. And he couldn't even help help. He, he, he couldn't even hold his breath. He went, he's like he's just shaking. Somehow he's just pressed making him shake. And then Jesus pointed to him. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> Jesus pointed to him and said, Zacchaeus. And he almost fell off the tree. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, he didn't know, he didn't know that Jesus knew him. He knew his name. <laughs> How come he knew my name? Who told him? <laughs> How did Jesus know his name or my name? They had never met before. He said, Lord, he thought, are you sure it's me? I said, you know, Lord Jesus, are you calling me? I'm Zacchaeus, a publican, a thief, an extortioner, and a just man. No, he, that's why he was in his mind. He just went like this, Zacchaeus. Uh, man. Zacchaeus did not miss the opportunity. When Jesus called him, he came down quickly. And he received Jesus Christ lots of joy. Joy. Jesus called him. Amen? Amen. He called him and walked with Christ through the crowd towards his residence. But on the way to his home, to his house, the bad people, bad language of the Pharisees, Sadducees, the oh, how did it be? He called, he called a, a publican to follow him. How can that be? How can Jesus be a rabbi? How can he be a rabbi and have dinner in this man's house, this publican's house? And he didn't care. He overheard people maybe cursing him, but he didn't care. He was happy, dancing, and full of joy. And in spite of someone being sad and angry and surprised, but what what matters? Who touched him was Jesus Christ, amen? amen. And what did he do? Uh, he perceived, he overheard. He said, okay, he said to Jesus Christ, these words, look at here, it's beautiful. Luke, okay, just have to last read it. Luke 19, okay. Verse nine, Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house, amen? Because this man too is a son of Abraham. He said that, but before that, Zacchaeus said to him, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions. So he became a disciple of Jesus. He knew that half of him, his money was stolen. And he gave, he gave to the poor half of what he owned. Amen? So he didn't love money anymore. He wanted to be Jesus' disciple, and he became a Jesus' disciple. 
And when he did this, Jesus Christ said, salvation has come to him. Okay? Jesus did not condemn him what he, done, he did before. He just said, salvation has come to, to you. So he was saved from hell through his faith in the Lord. And the Lord changed him because anybody who comes to the Lord by faith and loves the Lord like he did is touched and moved by the Lord. Amen? Yeah. And Zacchaeus was radically changed. Like in Matthew. Matthew was a publican too. And he was changed before Zacchaeus. But Zacchaeus was also changed and became a son of God. Amen? Amen. And that is beautiful. But what amazed me is that the Lord put his story in the Bible to see how Jesus became so happy. Jesus became amazed at Zacchaeus. Because Zacchaeus went up to the tree, man. A short man went up the tree to see him. Is that he just felt his heart. He knew that he was really interested as nobody else there had the interest of knowing of getting to know Christ as Zacchaeus did. Amen. And he looked at Zacchaeus, come down, Zacchaeus. <laughs> and Zacchaeus said, I have a friend now. I have a true friend. I have a pastor, a shepherd. I have somebody who really likes me, no matter what he loves me. And he forgave me. He forgave my sins. And now I want to be his disciple. Amen? Amen. And that's what is really important uh, of his life. Okay? So impressed, moved, and embarrassed by the love of Jesus, who never accused him, he criticized him for his lack of honesty. Zacchaeus decided to make his profession of faith publicly. He had an account with Jesus. Now he needed to speak, testify, to tell and say what he believed. He was radically changed by the power of God. Amen? So, conclusion. Today, there's salvation for you. Amen? Amen. Don't forget this. All of us, we have to follow Jesus the same way Zacchaeus followed. We have to be radically changed by the Lord Jesus. Amen? We have to let the Lord do what has to be done. Amen? Amen. Salvation is in the house. Amen? Amen. And uh, a question is this. Have you ever heard Jesus calling you? Have you ever felt the Holy Spirit uh, touching you? Have you ever sensed that you need to to be a true follower of Christ, of doing whatever it takes to be his follower, right? That's what it is all about, okay? Uh, Jesus says to you, son, I love you. Get down from there. Don't be in a fig tree of despair, of ap apathism, you know I mean? of, of apathy. Don't come down, whatever you want, come down and be a true follower of Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's all ask the Lord to move mountains with Him. Amen? To move the mountains that are before us so we can really be what He wants us to be. Okay? Until today, God uses people in His Bible to talk to me, to say, Lord, Lord, Lord Son. I need you to change this and this and this and that. Amen? Amen? You have to change this, this and that. And that's what the Lord does to me. I hope he does to you too. Okay? May the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful week. And let's just hear one more song. And then 